A beautiful sight, we're happy tonight Walking in a winter wonderland Hi, my name is Alexander Pavol. I am the Injury Prevention Coordinator at Tufts Medical Center. My work consists of doing community outreach to prevent injuries. Today I'm going to be doing some speaking about how you can prevent injuries by sho properly shoveling your walkways. Both at Tufts Medical Center and statewide, we see a greater incidence in slips and falls during the snowy weather than during the regular months, undoubtedly because of the snowy weather and icy conditions. Senator Robert T. Moore recognizes that fall-related injuries cost our state over $400 million each year. Older adults and people with disabilities are most likely to slip and fall on an uncleared sidewalk or pathway. What's inconvenient to a young, able-bodied person could be dangerous or life-threatening to someone else. Most towns with shoveling laws require a minimum of 36 inches shoveling on sidewalks so that a wheelchair can pass. Shovel with the pedestrian access in mind. Clear your sidewalks, and if your property has a curb ramp, be sure to clear that too. For anyone who walks on snow, here are some helpful tips. Shovel along with short, low steps and avoid a stiff posture. Walk as flat-footed as possible. This helps maintain a low center of balance and reduces the chance of slipping. Wear supportive rubber-soled shoes. Use handrails whenever possible. Balance yourself with your arms and take your time walking. Test potentially slick areas by tapping your foot on it to see if it's slippery or not before you put your weight onto it. Have your vision checked regularly if you are over age 65 and wear eyeglasses as needed. Also go over your, with your doctor any medications that may cause imbalance. Consider ice traction slip-ons available at any local department store. They're easy to slip onto shoes and they provide a durable, reusable, and inexpensive method to being able to walk on snow and even run on it. Here are some tips for people who are shoveling snow. A, sho a shovel full of snow can weigh over 10 pounds, so do as little lifting as possible and try to push it out of the way whenever possible. If you have a heart disease or a physical condition that limits your movement and activity, you should not shovel snow. The intense activity raises blood pressure, also um, with cold weather that constricts the blood vessels and it makes the risk of having a heart attack three times as much as without those conditions. The same goes as if you're an older adult over the age of 65 with health problems. While shoveling, remember to dress in warm layers, stay hydrated, take breaks if you feel sore or tired, lift with your legs, not with your back, and push snow if you can avoid lifting it. Also hold the shovel at arms apart so you can maximize leverage when picking up the snow. Thank you. My name is Rosa Carson. I'm here from Walk Boston to talk about walking safety tips in the winter when there's a lot of snow and ice on the sidewalk. The main thing to keep in mind when you're walking around in snowy and slippery conditions is that it's really important to slow down. The speed of your body carries a lot of momentum and by slowing down, you can reduce your chances of slipping and falling. And if you do slip, you, uh, it's easier to stay in control of your body uh, when there's a lot of ice and snow on the sidewalk. Patches of ice can be very difficult to see, uh, regardless of whether there's snow on the ground or not. And uh, sloping sidewalks at driveways can create a special hazard because the ice uh, on a slant makes it really difficult to keep your footing even when you're uh, moving slowly and in good control of your body. So it's important to keep an eye on the surface of the sidewalk as you're moving around. Uh, when snow is fresh, it can be very difficult to see hazards under the snow. You can't see patches of ice, of course, but you also can't see cracks in the sidewalk or if there are holes or other things that you would normally be able to navigate around. So that's another reason to slow down. Uh, walking at a slower pace, uh, can definitely help you stay in control and avoid the hazards and reduce the hazards as you're moving around. Uh, another thing that can really help is having this kind of grippy thing that you can attach to your shoes. There are a lot of different kinds. This kind sort of looks like a, a climbing crampon. It has metal spikes that uh, will grip into the ice or snow and help you not slip as you move around. 
Other kinds have coils of metal that will help you grip into ice and snow. Uh, I don't have any opinions on which of these is best, uh, but having anything like this can help you fall, uh, help you avoid falling rather. Um, when you're walking around, it, it can help to do something that our friend Sonia Duray at the Human Rights Commission calls the Minnesota Shuffle. That is, don't lift your feet up too much and move pretty slowly, and don't take wide strides. We will talk a little bit when we're out on the sidewalk about why having shorter steps can help you maintain your balance and stay on your feet. Keeping your knees bent and relaxed can also help you avoid slipping, and if you are a little unsteady on your feet, having a walking stick or a cane can add an extra point of contact with the ground. Uh, I think that's it, actually. So, these are all the, the points to keep in mind as you're walking around in snow and ice, and uh, now we'll step out on the sidewalk and talk about details. And now we're outside to talk about walking in snowy and icy conditions. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have snow and ice here today, and it's funny to find myself saying that, uh, but we can actually look around and, and see some of the conditions that we are going to encounter when we're walking around. Driveways are often slanted, and that can pose a special challenge when there's snow or ice on the ground because it means that you don't have a level surface for walking on. Uh, as you're walking along a sloped surface, if there's ice on it, it's extra important to take very small steps and shuffling steps and keep your weight balanced over your feet. As you're walking along any surface, whether it's level or slanted, the smaller steps you take, the more centered your body weight will be over your feet. When you take a wide step, which is how we normally walk when, uh, when there's no snow or ice on the ground, your body weight is first on your hind foot and then pushes off onto your forefoot and you are sort of out of balance for a lot of the step. By taking much smaller steps you keep your weight directly over your feet and it's easier to keep your balance. It also means that if I put my foot down and I do slip, my feet are not so far apart and it helps me keep my balance. When I'm walking along a level sidewalk and approaching a driveway, I can see that the dr driveway is at a slant and often driveways will have extra ice on them as runoff comes off of driveways. That ice can be very slippery and, and really mirror smooth, so it can be a real problem. This is a great place to really use a shuffle. You can hold your arms out for balance and just move as slowly as you need to as you walk across this slanted slick surface. Sometimes walking on the edge is a better bet because that may be a place where there's some snow that isn't so smooth and it can give you some extra traction. If you need to, it is okay to walk out in the street. Uh, it's always a little bit safer to be on the sidewalk, but if it's a matter of an extremely slippery slanted sl sidewalk and a better cleared street, it can be okay to step out and walk there too. Beautiful sight, we're happy tonight. Walking in a winter wonderland Gone astray